So yes, I'm sure you're wondering what price should you buy gold? When should you buy gold? Or should you buy gold at all? <laughs> Two weeks ago, gold was bearish, sinking like a ship. And then last week, gold is going up like a rocket, very bullish. So in this regular weekly analysis, which I do every Sunday, I will tell you the price you should buy and why you should buy. But before I get started with the regular weekly analysis, I just want to take a few seconds to share with you a question. I want to answer a question that people often ask me, and that is, what broker should I use? And I will share with you the broker that I use, and that is Due Prime. And as you can see in their logo, they are the uh, sponsor for Manchester United. And that's not the reason that I use them. <laughs> okay, it's good to know. Uh, but uh, the reasons that I use Due Prime, and I'll share with you, one, they have low spreads and fast execution, very important for any Forex trader. They have swap free on their major U.S. pairs. That's very important if you uh, hold your trades for any period of time, for several days or several weeks even. They have instant withdrawals. Amazing. You don't have to wait for the money to get to the bank. Instant withdrawals. Uh, they have 2,000 tradable assets. Everything you could possibly want to trade, indexes, crypto, uh, currency pairs, commodities, stocks, CFDs, everything you could possibly want to trade. And you can trade crypto 24-7. This is where they're very different from most Forex brokers in the world. Most Forex brokers will close down their platform at the end of trading uh, in the U.S. session on Friday, not do prime. If you want to trade crypto on Saturday or Sunday, you can 24-7. And they have their global offices in Dubai. They are global. They are all over the world. And they just celebrated their 10th anniversary. Now, I've been using them for quite a long time, and I highly recommend them. If you want to join me and my global team in Prosperity Rising FX, I'll leave the link below in the description. So now let's have a look at the regular weekly analysis, which I do every Sunday before the market opens on Monday. And this week starting on the 25th of November, the last week of November 2024. And what we look at, of course, is the high impact news that's coming out this week. We look at the profits from last week's trade setups, and I will share my pending orders with you, the trade setups that I have in place for this upcoming week. And I do all of this to help you be profitable with your Forex trading. And jumping over to the screenshot that I have taken from forexfactory.com, that's our go-to website for the high impact news. And we see we have not such a busy calendar this week, but some very important items coming out. I haven't highlighted those, but the main thing is on Wednesday, we have the official cash rate for the New Zealand economy. And they are projected to lower the interest rate by 50 basis points. So that could be quite impactful on the New Zealand U.S. dollar. So be sure and watch that. Check your uh, forexfactory.com for your local times. That will be at uh, 8 a.m. Uh, Wednesday in Southeast Asia. And then another very important one is, of course, the FOMC. Uh, that's a once-a-month data release, and that will be after midnight on Wednesday in Southeast Asia or Thursday during the day if you live in uh, the United States or Canada or South America. Just be sure and check forexfactory.com for your local times for these high-impact news items. And starting off sharing the profit that we had from last week's trade setups and starting off with gold. Unfortunately, gold hit the stop loss. I had a sell limit because we've been seeing gold being bearish for the last uh, several weeks making it, like I said, sinking like a ship. So I had a sell limit on that, expecting gold to come up to uh, 2600 or 2575 I had two pending orders there, two pending sell limits. And on Monday, as you can see, gold just took off, just blasted off, <laughs> never looked back. For the next five days, moved up 1,500 pips between Monday and Friday. It, gold moved up the price of $150. So we hit the stop loss on that one. Very unusual that I hit the stop loss on gold, but that's why we use a stop loss is to protect our capital. If we had held on to that trade, we would be in deep trouble with a really big loss today. But that one hit the stop loss, so we forget about that trade and move on. With the US 30, it was very profitable. I had a buy limit way down here at 42,964, and it moved up starting on Wednesday, and then very good move on Thursday, and finishing the US session at 44,351. With the Euro US, 
I had a sell limit on that one, and uh, that one took off on Monday. It just never even looked back. Just, just just started sinking as soon as the week started. With the odd US, uh, we got a little bit on that one. I had the sell limit. Uh, it opened on Tuesday and then just went sideways, went up a little bit, then came down, dropped a little bit. If you had closed the trade at the end of the US session uh, or before the US session closed, you could have gotten like five, six, seven pips. But this trade is still open, all right, because I'm still bearish on the U.S. pairs. So this odd U.S. sell limit, which opened back here on Tuesday, is still open, still running. The New Zealand U.S. Uh, did well for us, okay, 56 pips. That one opened on Monday, came up, went a little bit the wrong direction, and then uh, midweek started to go the right direction for a grand total of 56 pips profit on the New Zealand U.S. Then the pound U.S. was a sell limit. Okay, that one opened on Wednesday and then went down on Thursday and Friday for 208 pips. So this one was the cash cow for this week. The USD CAD, I had a buy limit for those of you that wanted to trade, but if you remember last week's video, I said I would not take this trade and I did not take this trade. I just shared that with you for those of you that wanted to continue to see if go if the USD CAD would continue to higher prices. Remember, I talked about the uh, triple top that we've been seeing over the last uh, several years, okay, and that's in the 140 zone. And I I just did not expect that it would go higher than that, and sure enough, it didn't. Uh, so the USD CAD went the wrong direction. Uh, it's starting to pull away from those extreme high prices of the 140. It's dropped below that now, and I expect to see it to continue to move down. And as it does, and as I get confirmation on any kind of a, a change in direction, definitely bearish, then I will start to go short on the USD CAD. But for the moment, uh, this was just a trade that I shared with you. The, those of you that were game enough to buy, okay, I told you I would not take that trade, and I did not take that trade, but those of you that were game enough to buy, and I hope you didn't. I hope you didn't take that trade. I hope you took my advice that the USD CAD is very, very overpriced, very, very high. It's only been this high. Uh, for in the last 20 years, about three times. So let's wait for the uh, for this thing to cool off, and then we should start to see some bearish direction, and I'll hopefully have a, a sell limit coming up in the near future. On the UJ, okay, this one did well. I told you to buy on market open. If you did that, it went just a little bit the wrong direction, just, just momentarily, and then went up uh, during the day on Monday. You could have closed that trade with profit. It went down the uh, wrong direction on Tuesday, but then took off on Wednesday and Thursday and finished up on uh, Wednesday, late Wednesday, with 156 pips profit on the UJ. So now let's see what the uh, week is holding for us. What sort of trades do I have in place? Uh, what are my pending orders that I'm going to share with you now? And we're looking at gold first. Okay, gold. <laughs> Here it is uh, from the beginning of Monday, taking off, going to the end of the closed session with 1,500 pip move. It just went up all week long for a short pullback on Wednesday, but then just continued that run. So it's uh, closed the price at 2715. Uh, on Friday. And so now our support level is uh, just a little bit below that at 2708 and just below that at 2700. Remember, 2700 is a very strong uh, psychological support level. So we're likely to come back and touch that again before uh, taking off to higher prices. I'm definitely bullish on gold. It is bullish on the H4 chart. Uh, neutral on the day chart, but turning bullish on the day chart. So I am bullish on gold and I have my buy limit at 2700. All right. Bullish on gold, buy limit at 2700. Then we look at the uh, US 30. And what I have for that is a buy limit also as the stock market continues to improve. Okay, with the buy limit at 44,191.47. You see it did very well starting uh, midweek, started to move up dramatically on Thursday, and then even more so on Friday. So we should see a small correction on that before continuing to higher prices. A buy limit on the US 30. Then the Euro, Euro US, of course, I am bearish on the uh, major pairs with the strengthening of the US dollar. 
which we continue to see. So on the Euro US, I have a sell limit at 1.0470. It's bro broken below that on uh, Friday, but then came back up a little bit, let it make a little bit more correction to our uh, resistance level here at 1.0470. Then the odd US, I also have a sell limit on that one, okay, with the entry price at 0 0.6515. The New Zealand US, a sell limit at 0 0.5850. What a great time for the Americans to go to uh, Australia or New Zealand. Just for 58 cents, you can buy one New Zealand dollar. All right, then the pound US, I have a sell limit on that one with the entry price at 1.2575. And the USD CAD, still no trade on that one. Okay, it hasn't come down far enough for me away from those high prices. It's still at uh, 139.70, 1.3970. So still too high for me to even consider uh, a trade either direction. So the UJ, again, buy on market open. I'm bullish on the UJ as we continue to see strengthening of the US dollar. So the market open price will be 154 pot. 0.707. Okay, buy the UJ on market open. And let's just have a quick look at the uh, Bitcoin, see what it's doing. These blue lines you hear are $5,000 apart. So we have 90,000, which had uh, passed a long time ago, and then 95,000, and now it's approaching 100,000. We got really, really close to that on Thursday with a price of uh, 99. 317, dollars So we're very likely to uh, break above 100000 maybe this weekend, uh, but certainly uh, before the 1st of December. I'm sure we will see 100000 on Bitcoin. And then, of course, I'd like to share my indexes with you. First, we'll look at the JPY basket, and it's pretty much sideways. Nothing much to report on the JPY basket. But the DXY is interesting as it continues to gain strength. Ever since this big candle here, this was the day of the election, okay? And the US dollar has just gained strength ever since then. It dropped, made a bit of a correction um, a few days after the election, but then it started to go up and then sideways for a little bit, but then made a really big dramatic move on the close of the US session on Friday. So continuing strength of the US dollar. Okay, that wraps up this weekly analysis starting on the 25th of November. 2024. I hope that these trade setups that I share with you will help you to make profit in your Forex trading. Just remember that this is not financial advice. I'm not suggesting or recommending you take the same trades. You can if you want to, all right, but it's up to you to manage your risk, uh, to use uh, good sense in your trading. Don't over trade, don't trade too big, don't over lot, and don't chase the candles. Most important in trading Forex is protect your capital. Okay, so any comments or questions, leave them below. If there's anything else I can help you with in your Forex trading, uh, don't be shy. Uh, make your uh, comment and I'll be glad to get back to you. Until next time, I'll see you in the next video. And don't forget, be kind to yourself, be kind to others.